Peterson and welcome to Picket Fence Studios. Today is the day of our March 2021 release and I get to introduce you to a brand new product. It is called Paper Glaze Enhancer, okay? And it does exactly what it says. You're going to use this and add it to your pre-existing purchase of paper glaze. Now paper glaze, we have 20 colors at present and we're going to add the enhancer to that line. So your 20 um, paper glaze colors that are a creamy pearlescent substance that allows you to have a super shiny finish, which you can use through stencils, or any other type of mixed media process. You can just directly use it on paper. There's lots of uses for paper glaze. So we have invented a product that allows you to take your paper glaze and turn it into a different product that takes the pearlescent, it removes the pearlescent from your paper glaze, and it turns it into a matte finish mixed media product. So. My husband is here also, if you hear him chime in. So what it does is it is going to remove that, that gloss that paper glaze has that we're, it's known for. And it's going to, think of it like paint, where you have satin paint and then you have a matte finish. Well, that's what the paper enhancer does. It t removes that satiny finish of paper glaze. Much thicker. It is much thicker than, than paper glaze. And it allows you to turn your creamy, smooth paper glaze into a matte finish. So you can see the difference in the jars, okay? Very, very simple. And paper glaze enhancer is very light. It's extremely light. It doesn't, it won't come out in your jar. So we're gonna start by mixing some colors, okay? And what's the ratio? Uh, one to one. Okay, so we're gonna do a one to one ratio. Now I'm pretty heavy handed and I, I you know, this is kind of like cooking, adding salt or whatever to your dishes. Sorry. It's the same premise of how much salt you like compared to um, how much pepper. So we're going to do a one to one ratio. And I'm going to just, this is just a, a, a cheap glass palette because it's easy to come off. So there's a little bit of the paper glaze enhancer. And then I'm going to take some peony, peony pink or peony pink, whichever way you want to say it, and I'm going to attempt to take the same amount out. A little bit more. Now, my husband likes to measure this stuff, but I, I'm not measuring. You know, that's not how us crafters, we don't roll like that, right? So I'm just going to take this, and you can see right away that the pearlescence of paper glaze is being removed by the enhancer. The paper glaze enhancer. Now it has also changed the color of the paper glaze. It's made it a little bit lighter but if you don't like it at this light you can go back and add a little bit more paper glaze if you like to help it um, you know darken up a little bit but it's really how much you put in it or how little you put in it is really up to you. So you can see that my paper glaze enhancer has removed that pearlescent look of paper glaze and also it's thick it's a little bit thicker so let's see how it works with a stencil move this to the side grab a piece of paper if you hear dog collars because there are four dogs at my feet wondering why they're not getting attention so I'm using a full sheet of eight and a half by eleven piece of paper on one of our slimline stencils and our slimline stencils are four by ten for a reason because when I work with the stencil I like to have a full sheet of paper that way if you make a mistake on one side you still have a whole other side of the piece of paper and also you can always trim down where you can't necessarily add to a piece of paper so I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to lay down my paper glaze that has the enhancer in it the enhanced paper glaze and I'm just going to smooth it across this stencil so 
So you can make this as thick or as thin as you like, whatever your preference is. This is going to be probably a little bit thicker than the actual stencil itself. Normally I use um, a transparency to mix it on, but with lighting as it is with photography and videography, you it reflects. So that's why I'm using the white, um, this palette to the side. So I've got it spread across, all across. And it still goes on really smooth. Right, it's very smooth. And you know, I could sit here and try to get it much more even. Actually, Matt is really good at getting it, he, my husband, who you're talking, it's much better at getting it even. I just kind of like want it to get on there. Yeah, you don't roll like that. No, <laughs> just get it on there. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the stencil off and give you a look of what it looks like. So as you see, it's much flatter in this look. We've removed the satiny finish pearlescent look, if you like. But it's super cool because it allows you to take a product you already own and stretch it and turn it into a second product. Okay, so let's do this one more time. That was the pink. Let's do it on black because I really like the way that you can see the difference between black paper and white paper. So let's just go ahead and stick with the peony pink. You do not want to put your pink your paper glaze into your enhancer jar just because you know you kind of want to try to keep it clean so I'm going to grab a little some more of the paper glaze enhancer and I'm going to put it in there I'm going to mix a little bit more this time because I'm going to use a different stencil so there's our paper glaze enhancer again and then I'm going to attempt to get an equal amount one-to-one -one ratio of the paper glaze peony, or peony paper glaze. Mix that up. Now remember the, the enhancer does have white mica in it because we wanted to seal it for it to be a little shiny. But if you look here, it has gotten really light, which means I probably, if I wanted to remain the integrity of the color of peony, I could probably come back and just add a little bit more paper glaze to it, and that color will pop right back up. All right. Again, I would normally use a transparency to do this. So let's use this stencil this time. And it has adhesive on the back of it already. I do attempt to lay the stencils down flat, so it does help me when I cut them down. So I'm going to grab some of the peony pink that has the paper glaze enhancer added to it. And I'm going to scrape it down. It's okay if I'm getting it outside the lines because my card is smaller than this stencil. The stencil is four by 10, and I'm going to be making a slimline card, which at Pick and Fence Studios is eight and a half by three and a half. So I will have plenty of space to cut this down. And you can die cut with paper glaze once it's dried. You can put it in your um, regular die cut machine and die cut, die cut it like normal. Your um, dies will go through it. There you go, teamwork. Teamwork. It's much easier if you just put it on the transparency. Yeah, we'll have to use a different container next time. Yeah. We can try. Okay. So again, you can scrape off the excess. And you see how much I have a lot left over of the paper glaze? If you wanted to put that into an empty, the paper glaze with paper enhancer added, you could put this in a jar and just keep it for later. It will last. Just going to... 
scrape a little bit more of it off. Okay, so I'm going to pull my stencil off. And I do advise picking your paper up and holding it at an angle and pulling your stencil off like so. And then if you're like me and you have a trusty assistant, you can hand the stencil off to them. Okay, so there is the peony PM paper glaze added with the paper glaze enhancer on black. So you can see what it, what it looks like on whites, okay, and then what it looks like on top of black. But I have something else I want to show you. Because, you know, you can always take your paper glaze to the next level after it's dried. I'm going to close this up. So after your paper glaze has dried, you can go back over it and do some ink blending. Okay, so this was this is a slimline card. So I used one of the largest die in our slimline die cutting system, the one with the dashes, nested rectangles, and I did the same thing. I pushed, I mi mixed. This is the cornflower blue with paper glaze enhancer. Put it through a stencil, and then I let it dry. Then before I die cut it, I added ink to it. Okay, so I did some ink blending with just one color. And then I went and I, I was using a reactive ink or like a distress ink. I can't remember what color I used, but whatever ink it was, it allowed the ink to react to water. So then I misted it with water and picked up some of the color of the ink with the paper towel. So you can see that the um, paper glaze did not react. The paper glaze with the paper glaze enhancer did not react when it was um, misted with water. It stayed exactly the same. So I wanted to show you that. So I have these that are dry. This is our um, slimline leaf. And then I did this one also. You can see this one's on black and this one is on white. And then I also have pink and this is yellow. And it's actually, I know a lot of people um, frown away or turn away from yellow. This is beautiful. It actually is prettier um, when it's dry. I love yellow is my kind of go-to color. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this one and we're going to ink blend on top of it. So let me hand this over to my husband and let's get this out the way. And you know we are the home of life-changing blender brushes. So I'm going to take a piece of white paper that's bigger than my surface not in my sink, and I'm going to add some ink right on top of this. Now, this is Catherine Pooler's Blackjack um, ink, and her ink is water reactive. It's a dye ink. But what I like about this Blackjack color is it's not black. It's not gray. It's not charcoal. It's whatever color is between black and dark black. So I have a life changing blender brush, and I'm just going to ink it up like so by rubbing it across the surface of one of Catherine's inks. And I'm going to literally just on, right on top of the paper glaze, on top of the whole entire thing, I'm going to go ahead and ink blend. Now, I am not going to worry about having perfection here because I always like to add water to it. And that's what we're going to do is that we're going to mist it with water after. And that water will do two things. One, the ink will react to the water and give us like little water marks. And two, the water will come off the ink will remove the water from the top of the paper glaze. And guys, I am pushing really, really hard on this to get into all those crevices. And you can see the paper glaze enhancer that is mixed with the paper glaze is not moving at all. So I'm going to turn this around. Ink this up. This is the largest brush that we sell. And it actually is one of my favorite. I know a lot of people like the smaller sizes, but when I'm covering something, I just like to get it done. And this larger brush really does a good job of that. Okay, so you can see that Catherine Pooler's Black Jack is not necessarily a black, but it's also not really a gray. I don't, I don't know how else to describe it. It's a really good color. All right, so we'll put that to the side and I will grab a water mister and right away we're just going to mist with water and how much saturation you put is totally up to you because the paper glaze is not going to reactivate with just simple water but what will happen is the paper glaze will stay where it's put and the ink on top of it will react and then you can remove it 
so here's a paper towel. And this is how much, you know, all this ink blending is to taste, how much you want to take off and how much you want to leave on it. And you can see the paper glaze is all coming clean with just the water. And one other thing I like about paper glaze enhancer, and it also, it doesn't warp your paper. So your paper will be nice and dry and flat. And if we wanted to mist this or even after it's dry, go back and add a little bit more color here and there, you can. So you can ink blend right on top of your dry paper glaze, either just paper glaze or with the paper glaze enhancer, either way. And you can see with this one, this was the fish. And we took that gold and made it even richer looking. Okay, well that's it for us today, guys. I hope you love our brand new product, Paper Glaze Enhancer. This was meant with your, you in mind so we can always have more of our favorite products, meaning Paper Glaze. And it, remember, this takes your Paper Glaze and literally gives you a brand new product. So just mixing it one to one ratio, or even a little more or less, whatever you want. But you know, start with one to one ratio of Paper Glaze Enhancer and Paper Glaze, and you can either add more Paper Glaze or less the next time. And remember, you can always, we do have empty jars that we sell um, that you can keep your excess uh, paper glaze mixed with the enhancer in. So, I hope you have a great day, and thank you for stopping by.